Instances of fighting between rebel and U.S. forces during the Wars of Rebellion in the Far West were rare. Nevertheless, within the first year of the war, the U.S. forces under Colonel Edward Ares Camby, commander of the Department of New Mexico, faced a serious challenge when Henry Hopkins Sipley, with his rebel forces, made an advance into New Mexico. The New Mexico campaign turned out to be an utter disaster for the rebel forces, but also an important reminder of the importance of the region and fragility of U.S. territorial authority in New Mexico. As seen in previous videos, New Mexico's southern region had attempted to secede from New Mexico and join the rebellious government. Sibley's goals were to secure control over the southwest, access to the gold fields in Colorado, and open a route to the Pacific Ocean. With the departure of many of the regulars and rebel sympathetic secessionists, New Mexico seemed low-hanging fruit for the taking. Sibley brought with him a small army, the Confederate Army of New Mexico, consisting of the 4th and 5th Texas Mounted Rifles, 5 companies of the 7th Texas Mounted Rifles, 6 companies of the 2nd Texas Mounted Rifles, and several companies of Arizona Rebel Mounted Volunteers. This was a cavalry invasion force that had to traverse the arid region of West Texas to get to their target. Commanding the Department of New Mexico, Colonel Edward R. S. Camby at Fort Craig had a large body of troops over a wide-ranging department. At Fort Craig itself, Camby had five regiments of New Mexico volunteers, infantry, as well as a company of Colorado volunteer infantry. Finally, there were 11 companies of the 5th, 7th, and 10th U.S. infantry, and six companies of the 2nd and 3rd U.S. cavalry. In the north, at Fort Union, Colonel Gabriel Paul had the 1st Colorado Infantry, a company of the 2nd Colorado Infantry, a detachment of the 5th U.S. Infantry, a detachment from the 1st and 3rd U.S. Cavalry, and a company of the 4th New Mexico Infantry. In February 1862, Zipley advanced northward, up the Rio Grande River Valley towards Santa Fe. In addition, Zipley sent a small detachment to occupy Tucson. Between Sibley and Albuquerque stood Canby at Fort Craig. Sibley needed to deal with that force, since such a large, almost 4,000 soldier force could cause major difficulties behind the lines. Therefore, Sibley desired to draw them out into battle. On February 19, Sibley cut communication lines between Fort Craig and Santa Fe. A brief sortie by U.S. forces the following day had to retreat under heavy rebel artillery fire. The next day, the rebels advanced on Valverde Fort, and Canby moved out to meet them. Their rebel forces forced the U.S. troops back into Fort Craig, but Canby refused to surrender. Without sufficient rations, Sibley could not mount a siege of Fort Craig. Therefore, he disengaged and continued his advance on Santa Fe. He knew there were U.S. supplies there that he could use and deny as supplies to Fort Craig. 
As they advanced, many of the Texan riders had to dismount. Their horses were so weakened. The Force Texas became an infantry unit. Even worse, forced to carry their wounded, the advance was extremely slow. This gave Canby time to trap Sibley's troops between his force and Fort Union. He disbanded his militia and most of the volunteer units, and sent most of his mounted units northward. On March 2nd, the rebels reached Albuquerque, and on March 13, Santa Fe. The slow advance had allowed the U.S. forces to evacuate. Most of supplies and reinforcements had arrived from Colorado under Colonel John Slaw, who took over command, outranking the commander at Fort Union. Miscommunications between Slaw and Canby gave Slaw the impression he had authority to advance. The result was the Battle of Glorieta Pass on March 28. The rebel forces were able to push the U.S. troops back through the pass but had to withdraw when a cavalry raid behind the lines destroyed their wagon train and almost all the supplies and ammunition. Both sides withdrew. Upon reaching Fort Union, Slaunt resigned and returned to Colorado. As Canby realized the growing weakness of Sibley's forces, he ordered all U.S. forces in the region to concentrate on Albuquerque. Seeing the writing on the wall, Outnumbered, outgunned, and without supplies, Sibley decided to head back to Texas. On April 12, he evacuated Albuquerque and fought a small engagement against Cambia Peralta two days later. A sandstorm permitted the rebels to withdraw to the West Bank. Cut off from retreat down the East Bank, Sibley's army had to retreat down the West Bank or through the mountains to the west in search of food and water. With the advance of the California Column closing in from the west and Canby's army approaching from the north, Mesilla residents rose against the confiscations by the 7th Texas Mounted Rifles and 1st Arizona Mounted Rifles left to garrison the Mesilla Valley. The Second Battle of Mesilla was a skirmish fought in the desert near the city on July 1, 1862, between rebel Arizonans and loyal New Mexican militia. The latter prevailed. With Sibley gone, Colonel James Carlton of the California Column took over command. Canby headed east to the other theaters of the war. Carlton occupied a few outposts in western Texas, but used the majority of his forces against the Apache and Navajo people. New Mexico is a great example of how closely War of the Rebellion, French invasion of Mexico, and Native American conflicts were tied together, and the rebel invasion was a powerful reminder of how quickly things could go sideways in the region for the Lincoln government. Luck and superior military leadership allowed the United States to keep a hold on New Mexico. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.